Hello everyone, welcome back to Top Dogs. 946, Firstly, okay. we'd like to address that Fiction, as you can see, is not going to be joining us today. Unfortunately, his PC is sick and is currently in the computer hospital being repaired. But don't That's worry, he'll return to us next week and uh, we're hoping that things will be better than ever. But today, we're going to be going to dive into the virtual world of video games. From old school classics to new generation favorites, we're going to explore the fantasy lands beyond reality. My name is Sakura. I'm Stream Arcadad. And I'm everyone's favorite Hembo, Whiplash Wolf. You sure are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Alright, guys, so as we dive in, let's first start off with the most asked question in the whole world of video games. Which ones are your favorites, and why? Mm, it's going to be a tough one to answer because I have a few, but uh, the ones I remember the most, if I go with the most vibrant memory of playing a very good video game, was the Assassin's Creed 2 series, including both Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelation. Uh, lately, I've been really into video games that have a really in-depth story and adventure going on with a lot of research and background. I've been really into those... Uh, games with campaigns i used to play a lot of multiplayer games when i was a kid but i realized that at the end of the day what did i do nothing uh so playing campaign <laughs> games are really the thing i dig for and they're absolutely great my second favorite would be the mass effect series which is a whole subject on its own quite good i like it that's awesome and our favorite himbo wolf what about you favorite video games and why <laughs> I really enjoy horror games. Ever from a young age, I planned, I played, uh, okay, this might not have been a scary game back in the day, but Turok, for some reason, Turok scared me when I was a child, but I played a hell of it regardless. And then that kind of got me into the Silent Hill games and got me into Resident Evil games and just so forth. When Dead Space came out, that became my number one favorite horror game. I just, I love horror games because some of them can be good. Or excuse me, some of them can be good, and some of them can be very good, and it gets you in depth into the atmosphere of the game, and scares the crap out of you because you don't expect something to happen, and it just does. <laughs> or like if you play Kinda horror like... on VR. <laughs> oh my god, I don't play horror in VR. I'm too scared of that. I gotta Aww, say the Death Space games are so good. I really enjoyed all three of them, and I hope they're gonna do more with them because this series was really good. But, you know, they're scary. Some of those horror games are very scary at first, but then you start to notice the pattern. Like in Dead Space, you see this necromorph on the, on the floor, and he's like in tact prestige condition, pretending to be dead. I'm like, okay, I know what you're doing. <laughs> start shooting it, and then it gets up, starts running at you. It's like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> It's kind of like that you way favorite? with me and um for me I mean I'm huge into JRPGs like um the Final Fantasy series um Fantasy Star um I've played the first Golden Sun um and Grandia back on the PS1 was a really good game Lunar Silver Star Story Complete on the PS1 was a really good game. I don't know. I, I just I like stories that have good music to them, but also like tell a story that really engages you. And at the same time, you know, I also really enjoy games that, you know, you can get that emotional attachment to. Like I, I'm not afraid to admit, and anybody who's been to my streams know I, I've kind of cried my eyes out to a few games during a few scenes. Um, oh. Yeah, no, I, I, I like games with an emotional attachment that tell a really good story. <laughs> I can't reach them too short. <sighs> Here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Hold Thank her you. thigh, she'll be good. <laughs> I mean, there we go. Nice. Hey, anyway. Oh. <laughs> 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 
of now obviously you know we, we talk we go a lot about a lot of these old games and stuff too but you know we also ha- have to think about like you know there's a new generation of gaming so we have everything from the old school 8-bit 16-bit and dare i say the old school you know a 64 bit but now we've got games with like full like movie cgi graphics and you know new generation processing and stuff like i don't know i guess for like actually we'll go over here like you know as a gamer which you know which type is your favorite do you prefer like the old school or do you prefer the new school it's depending on how well the game is done and how it goes with the the cinematics is going with like when Undertale came out. If we all remember that, it's just a normal like yes. you know 16-bit looking game, 32-bit whatever it is. But it was just amazing because the storytelling is what sent that game to the moon. Like the storytelling was amazing. You don't need good graphics to have an amazing story, amazing game. I mean, as we've seen from Nintendo 64 days and Super Nintendo. Sega, Jupiter, whatever it was called, I can't remember. Saturn, Saturn, yeah, Saturn. <laughs> I didn't really have the Sega. I didn't have the Sega consoles, so I had all the Nintendo consoles. But I mean, I. It's weird to like look at like a game from two thousand one. Like let's uh let's do Fusion Frenzy. Like how we look at that game, right? <laughs> like back in the day, we thought like that was the best graphics in existence, and now we go to like play. Let's say. Call of Duty or Starfield, and oh, th- the graphics are like almost realistic, especially the cutscenes. Like cutscenes are too damn realistic <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I almost feel like you're watching a movie with a lot of those cinematics nowadays. It really is, especially the CODs. Like I will say this. Call of Duty or Infinity or who it is, Activision, I, they're cinematics just like... I've never been a fan of World of Warcraft, but they're cinematics though. Even from the get-go, we're like the top notch, especially like, even when they started like back in the 90s, the late 90s. It's just, hmm. they've been so good since then. What about you, Stream? Where are you at in the whole uh, old school versus new school? <laughs> So I have souvenirs playing on all consoles, so there's, I can't really, I have souvenir on all consoles, but I really like the new generation of game because I feel it's a lot immersive. You feel like you're really part of the game. So me, I prefer, I'm the type of guy that looks forward and I'm excited to what the future brings us. So for me, obviously it will be the, the you know, modern graphics and CGI because it just, puts you in the scene right it, it feels so real and those storylines of those environments are so goddamn beautiful but i have my nostalgia playing those 8-bit and 16-bit games playing playstation 1 so it's you know they're both great and like whiplash said earlier you don't need massive graphic to have an amazing storyline but If I would look at it objectively, I prefer newer graphics, uh, just for the immersion factor, simply for that. What about you, Sakura? That's very fair. Um, For me, anybody who knows me, I'm a freak for the old school. Like, you know, Nintendo, Super (laughs) Nintendo, Game Boy, Sega Genesis. You know, I I love the classics. You know, I've always been a kid at heart. Like, I started off with Super Mario Bros. 3 as my very first game. And, like, it, it, you know, then we... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We bought that brand new when when it came out. Let that tell you how old I am. Which console? But, um, oh, original NES. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. When uh, like Super 91? Mario Brothers three came out, um, I, I want to say I think it was eighty nine, if I yeah, remember correctly. The first Legend of Zelda was <laughs> was brought to market on the same year I was born, which I think is ninety one, if I remember correctly. And Sonic. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So no, it's Sonic. Two years old now. Yeah, <laughs> almost. I was a very Sonic fan when I was like younger. Huge nerd. I do love Sonic. Sonic is a really good game series. Yeah, but you like his spikes. 
<laughs> but yeah, and then like you know, I grew into the Super Nintendo, and that actually became like my favorite console. So like, 16-bit gaming for me was really kind of you know where it was at for, and still is to this day. Like you know where I like to be. Um, you know, and kind of going along the same lines of like the uh, you know how we like our games you know there's a lot of genres from like you know jrpgs to first person shooters to platformers to you know puzzle games like you know where like what are your favorite genres that you know you go to when you want to pick up a game adventure games uh the mass effect series is probably one of the exception because it is an rpg but again there's a storyline there's an an adventure there's something going on uh but the the dead space series is really good the assassin's creed series amazing storyline a lot of research a lot of thought a lot of details into those um i really like the halo games too as well it's one of the games i really enjoyed when i was a kid the call of duties were fun uh but I really like the adventure and discovery. I've been really digging lately the Tomb Raider series and uh, playing Uncharted. Absolutely love mm. both of these games. The story, the environment, it's like, oh, the puzzles. I, I like a little bit of action. I like climbing games and I like puzzles. So like Tomb Raider and Uncharted really gets my itch there. And, <laughs> you know, Assassin's Creed kind of gets there. I like the, you know, the assassination mecha mechanisms and the, how your fighting is really cool. I prefer futuristic mm -hmm. game, generally speaking, but the Assassin's Creed games are really the my exceptions that I truly enjoy. I think they're amazing. I'm very behind schedule. The last one I played was Black Flag and I just got sick of the boat mechanism <laughs> mechanics. I don't like boats and stuff, so I stopped playing after that. I just got busy with life. But yeah. What about you? It, it happens to every gamer. Yeah. Um... I guess for me personally, like, you know, I said, like, my big thing is JRPGs. You know, the games that have story to them, that have depth, that have emotion. Um... But, you know, again, going out back to a lot of the old school is, you know, I really enjoy, you know, old school platforming like Super Mario Brothers and um, like the Goonies. <laughs> Let that one sink in for a minute. Um, oh but like, you know, I, I, you know, I did love a lot of like, you know, puzzle games like Gearworks. I don't know if you've ever heard of Gearworks before. No, sadly, no. Whiplash, have you heard of Gearworks? No, but I have watched the Goonies, and also I was going to add on to what you said about Super, or Super Mario Brothers 3. That was one of my first games I played. Yes. Hell yeah, and let's go. Mario Kart 64, and Mario, Super Mario 64. Nintendo 64 was like my gaming, in, or into the gaming world. And then I remember as a kid playing Pokemon Emerald on a Game Boy Advance with a little light that came across this shine on the screen because there was a backlit screen back in the day. <laughs> oh my god, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. I had one of those. Except I can do you one better. I had mine on an all oh, the old uh, big brick Game Boy when I had my Pokemon Blue. Ah uh, yes, the big brick game ones. Yep. You know it's the one I never got though? I had um, the yellow Game Boy and then I had the Game Boy Advance. I meant to the DS, but I never got the uh, micro one they made for like what two years. <clears throat> oh god, the Game Boy Micro. That thing was. I don't even know how to feel about that one. It didn't last that long here. <laughs> no, it didn't. This. I um, but yeah, platforming puzzles. Anyway, no, I, I was talking about gear. Works, that's right. Um, so it was this old school like uh, Game Boy game where the whole point was to get you know the gear that was turning on the left and to like insert gears like throughout, and you only had so many to work with to get the gear on the right to start turning. And you had little mice that would come up to the screen and start popping your gears off and to try to get the gears just perfectly touching so that way you could, you know, get the gears. It, it, it was a nightmare, but I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Whiplash? What kind of genres are you into? See, it's like a mixed bag almost because 
my mood will change for what genre I like for some reason. Like when I was younger, it was playing multiplayer shoot 'em up games or playing adventure games like Mario, Zelda. And some of the when Halo first came out and uh Dishonored when they came out on PlayStation 3, like all the adventure games. And then like during my during the 2013, I started getting into like racing simulators. So I started playing Forza and Forza Horizon. Yes, all that let's stuff. Let's go. I love racing games. <laughs> and at the same time, I also started playing like Minecraft a lot too. Because it was introduced to the 360 back in 2012. And I played the crap mm. out of that on the game console. But it honestly like just depends. Like I enjoy horror, I enjoy adventure, I enjoy shoot 'em ups, I enjoy a very good, well articulated campaign if it's very well done. Like I said, Dishonored to me is one of my favorite ones. It's just a good game. And uh, like Death Space, Death Space One too, mm. or Death Space One as well. Have you played the new one yet, stream? The remastered one or re fully remaked one? No, I haven't. I need to. Uh, I really enjoyed so all three good. of them, but I I didn't know there was a remastered. They made the first. They remastered the first one, or a few of them. So they fully rebuilt the first one from the ground up, and they put stuff into the game that was taken out of the first game. So there's a lot of backstory to Ooh. the game now. Oh wow! I need I to love play when that. They do that with remasters. It's so good. It is so good. Yeah, because the story of of Dead Space is really it's really creepy, man. There's some stuff to keep you awake at night, man. It's so creepy, but I absolutely love it. I love how you can upgrade your guns. Any game mechanics that allow you to have perks and build your character and build your weapons. This is the one thing I really like about Dead Space Three is that I came up with a combo, a gun that was that made me like literally invincible. I did the most hardcore level difficult difficulty and it felt like a walk in the park <laughs> it was so easy <laughs> you know i would say it's funny because like most horror games are usually based on religion hmm. so does that mean yeah, that religion is. is the scariest thing of them all <laughs> well wasn't the monolith inside dead space like a cult going on yeah it was the um god church you know the church of uh god what was it called Oh my god, I used to know this like a back of my hand, which I should know very well. <laughs> okay, yeah, I will find it. Give me a second. I hate the Please. scene where you have to shove a needle in your eye to collect your memories. Oh, that one's I so hated hurts. that. Oh, you're <laughs> oh, It's so cringy. The no. Science Church of Unitology. <laughs> I feel like they're making fun of Scientology for some reason. Probably were. Mm. You know, Why? it's funny you bring up, uh, it's funny you bring up things that are really cringy because, you know, with the advent of uh, newer technology and stuff like that, people, you know, they create usernames for games now. Like you see that, especially on like Xbox, you see that on um, PlayStation Network, you see that on a lot of online games. And we see a lot of really cringy usernames. Um, have you been known for any cringy usernames? No, I've always taken the name thing really serious. So I had a few aliases before coming up with, you know, Stream Arcanine. I used to be, I used to be Cyber underscore Mick, and then it changed to Sergeant Mick. <laughs> and then I entered the furry friend, and I'm like, I need a name. And then just straight up with Stream Arcanine. <laughs> and then I had issued the TikTok, I had to recreate an account, and based off my. My comments I was getting on my videos, the word daddy or dad came up a lot. And since I was, you know, if I'm going to be doing the podcast, you know, Pokemon licensing and stuff like that. So I became stream Arcade dad and that's where I'm at. But I've always taken those name tags really seriously because I know you can't name change them. So I always like thought of head of time to avoid that. Now, Xbox uh, Live did allow you to change your name tag if you paid a certain amount of like G score or like credits. Um, but still, like, you don't mess around with that too much. <laughs> now, I could see you having a cringy username. I don't know why, but I can just see it. Have you been known by any <laughs> cringy usernames? 
probably back in my COD day. I just cannot remember though. I really cannot. I did used to use like when I used to be in the Brony Fendom, I did use um Baba Shadow Bolt. Like Shadow Bolt MLP Shadow Bolt, I think, as one of my uh, usernames back in the day. I guess that would be the cringes I've gotten, but I never really had like anything that was too well spoken, I guess. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh wait, Fisted does Steam waffles. usernames count? <laughs> yes, yeah, Steam usernames count. I think I made a name before with the word penis in it. I can't remember. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, no, there we go. That's me. what I'm talking about. <laughs> this has been a while. <laughs> oh my god! There you go. I knew it. I knew it. Congratulations, <laughs> you win on the cringy factor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I. I... I've been a lot like you stream in the regards that like, you know, I, I take the name thing very kind of seriously. Like, I don't know. It's just, I, I think back to like my earliest nicknames and, you know, how long I've been in the fandom and like, I, I, I you know, back when, believe it or not, everybody, I used to be a fox, just like every other furry in the fandom where we all start. But, um, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a wolf. I'm just, just I'm just a second. I'm the second to most amount of furries in the fandom who chose this species. I've always like, been an Arcanine. The moment I stepped in this fandom, I've always been an Arcanine, and I'm never gonna change. I don't have alternative sonas as well. I only have one. This guy. That's all I need. <laughs> that's me, though. That's awesome. But yeah, like I, I think back to like my earliest username, and it was uh, Kitsune Child. And uh, it just, yeah, <laughs> which I used for a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, and I, I, I don't know. Like I, I play Splatoon a lot with uh, Red Flash Drive, who is you know back there in our audience. And uh, you want to talk about a sea of cringy usernames in Splatoon? Um, it is. Is, it, it's something special. Children. To say the least. Children. It's really easy to explain. Children on the platform. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, when you change your username, you have to keep it for 60 days before you can change it again. So we, we sit there, we ask the question of, like, you know, what made you wake up that morning and decide that you were going to be, you know, insert cringy username here? Uh, I, I don't understand people sometimes. But, you know, that's just how it is. Um, but, you know, we talk about Splatoon, and, you know, a lot of us tend to also think about, like, you know, big MMORPGs or massive multiplayer online games. And those are actually still a big thing, like, today with, like, World of Warcraft and Star Trek Online, or we go back to, like, you know, the EverQuest days. Um, I don't know, did you oh, used God. to be into MMOs? And actually, do you still play any today? I played World of Warcraft once. I'm not really into like the massive multiplayer online genre because mainly it always usually like surrounds stuff like you know it seems to be like uh actually wait. No, I don't think I actually ever have, honestly. Nah, I I Oh wait, you know what? Does like PlayStation Home count? <laughs> nope. I don't no. think so, question mark? No, I don't think it, so. It, I mean, hey, it used to be like a online world for anyone who had like a PlayStation 3 at the time just to go onto it. It was a free app that came with a console and you can just go around different places that PlayStation had and then you just meet up with random people. And there's a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. I know it's not the same as like, you know, World of Warcraft or Star Wars when they had that one game out. I can't remember what it was called now. Oh, what was that Knights of the Old Republic? I think. Yeah, yeah, that one sounds about right. Yeah, I guess it just wasn't ever my like kind of cup of tea. But I mean, hey, everyone has their different things and different pleasures, I guess. <laughs> That's fair. What about you, Stream? Where are you at with all that? 
I don't really play MMOs, but I've played one, and it's old. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> it's pretty much dead nowadays. I mean, I mean, when I think of old MMOs, I would think of like either, um, golly, I would think of like either EverQuest or like Mabinogi. Um, otherwise, I I got nothing. RuneScape. Oh my god, I forgot about that one. I played for a few hours, maybe 10, 15. I, mean, I played for like a month or two and then I stopped playing it because I realized the farming was like out of control, how much time it would take to get anything done. And me, I like to get stuff done like fairly quickly. So any sort of game where you need to do a lot of farming and, you know, build your your skills and stuff. I absolutely hate that. I, I can't stand <laughs> it. It's, and like World of Warcraft, you want to play, go for it. You want to play Final Fantasy 15, go for it. But the the farming and looting and scavenging you need to do is out of control, and I absolutely hate it. I'd rather play a campaign and enjoy it. This is one of the reasons why I don't play Borderland, is I realize that you can't just progress through the different levels and the different sections. Sometimes you need to stop progressing, go on the side and do other quests and missions to rank your level up. Then you can proceed on forward, and that killed it for me absolutely killed it i stopped playing this game from that point when i realized this i'm like i like i'm going f forward i should be able to get through this and level according to the difficulty that is being presented to me i shouldn't have to go and do side quests in order to be able to beat that section so it just it, I, I just lost it <laughs> i just stopped playing it <laughs> Berlin, so good there. you know it's a good game. I gotta give it to them. It's good. It's well made. The mechanic is really cool. But that leveling up system, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, for me, um, like there, there's still a couple of MMOs that I play. Um, like my biggest one right now is actually Star Trek Online. Um, for Ooh. as old as that game is, it's actually still very, very populated these days. And since, you know, we've had all the new treks coming out between, like, the J.J. Abrams, um, you know, Discovery, Strange New World, Star Trek Picard, like, they've had so much new content that, like, they can keep this game going. And, you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, it was my father who got me into Star Trek. And, like, to see this game all these years that it's still going, like, I just, I'm in love with it. I love it so much. Uh, um, my, my biggest one back in the day was uh, Mabinogi. I don't know if you, go ahead. No, I've never heard about it, but I was going to say, we need to play Star Trek Bridge Crew together. You would love that game. Yes, please. <laughs> I've been looking for a crew to play that game with. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Yes, please. I love, I'm a very good pilot. But I'm really good at the helm. I don't know for you. My husband is a great captain. <laughs> Alright, we're going to have to set that up then. <laughs> and for those of you out there who doesn't know what Star Trek Bridge Crew is, it's um it's a game that you can get on Steam where it's a VR game and you're actually at the consoles and you do all of the things with the uh, the view screen out in front of you and you're actually like on the bridge of the starship. It's so freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Can I can I bring a small like parenthesis on like concerning Bridge Crew the first time I tried it? I'm yeah. going to try to take not too much time. So the first time I played this game, there was a, uh, um, a VR arcade demo by IMAX at Toronto. And my husband and I, we went to Toronto for some event. And we, we were like four, four friends, four French Quebecers going to Toronto where everybody <laughs> speaks English. And we started playing this game and we did this mission. And we were like derping the whole time. We were screaming, yelling in French, <laughs> being super goofy and all. People were staring at us like, what are those doofuses doing over there? And we ended up having one of the best scores they've ever seen on this game ever since they opened up the VR arcade. They couldn't believe it. We were shouting, like screaming in French and yelling like French insult in <laughs> Quebec. Oh man, it was so funny. I have so many fond memories of this game. I love it. So I'd love to play with you at some point. <laughs> no, we're going to set that up for sure. Absolutely. All right.
Sounds good. Phasmophobia. Now, before we can... Yes, and I, I want to do that. Phasmophobia <laughs> with you. Absolutely. So I, 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 that's the one scary game that I do actually really enjoy playing. I want to play Phasmophobia too. I love that game too. All four of us should play you know, it. We have been talking about end of the month special. Maybe yes, I want to do that. I want to do that. I, do that. To think I told about. fiction about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Something to look forward to, you guys. Anyway, before we continue, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to be alerted when new episodes like this one are going to be released. Follow us on our audio platforms and leave us a rating, so that'll actually help us out quite a bit. Because your comments do matter, believe it or not. And be sure to join our Discord and Telegram chats, so that way you can stay up to date with everything that's happening and chat with our fellow fans. Links for all of these are found down below in our link tree. Call down to all of our Top Dogs fan. You want some cool stuff? You can by subscribing to our service subscription on Discord or Patreon. Become a podcast supporter today to get exclusive, raw, and uncut footage of your favorite podcast episodes. Join supporter meetups and talk with the podcast team and other podcast supporters. Plus, get a custom-made paw emoji and other goodies that come with our $2.99 uh, a month subscription. But wait, there's more! Upgrade to the podcast supporter plus and get episode voting, supporter feedback, and be part of the live audience for only $5.99 a month. Plus, get sneak peeks of upcoming ideas, merchandising, and more. You don't have to join these subscriptions, but it does help us out a lot. And for everyone that has subscribed, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. And if you don't do, you know, at least one or two of the above, whiplash. So if you come to my fine eating establishment of Himbo Hooters and you don't subscribe to any of our podcasts, audio podcasts, or YouTube, when I bring out your wings, they're going to be dry as f Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no, not dry wings. Oh. I hate those. <laughs> no. You know when they were left like three times the amount of time they should be in the oven? <laughs> they mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's like jerky wings, dude. <laughs> jerky wings. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Atrocious. Yeah. Oh my god, no. <laughs> oh man. Unbelievable. All right. <laughs> now, when we think about, you know, <laughs> games that we so play. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yeah, man, to to joke of the day. That's one of your best, man. So, oh, I just picture them and I hate what I'm seeing. <laughs> Jerky wings on a plate. Like, and you gotta wait an hour for another set of four. It's just a, it's just a disappointment. <laughs> Platter of disappointment, that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. Get it together, get it together. <laughs> yeah, breathe. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm not doing anything. I know. Oh man, so you know, we we've talked about a lot of games and stuff like that. We talked about games from our childhood, we talked about a lot of games, you know that you know we've grown up with what we play now and one of the things about any game are the characters in the game. Now, when you think about the video games that you have played and the games that, you know, you play now, are there any characters that have, you know, really stood out to you that have, you know, maybe shaped how you live or that you've grown really attached to? Me, I think the character that influenced me the most in my child. Well, here's the thing. He didn't affect me that much, but has a everlasting impact was Master Chief from Halo 3. I absolutely love that character, uh, but I'm trying 
trying to think about other ones. Uh, Dead Space, I really like Isaac because he's a tinkerer. He fabricates his tools, he modifies his stuff. So that's another one that I really liked. It feels like it's always the same things that comes over and over. Um, but like characters that actually marked me. It's... I mean, Master Chief was very present during my childhood. That's basically how I learned English and be so good at it. But as, you know, as a character, he's just a big guy that doesn't talk much, kills Alien, and protects that one AI girl. So, I mean, <laughs> what can you draw from this? Not so much. Other than being reliable, keeping his promises, and, uh, you know, willing to sacrifice everything for the well-being of somebody else. Right. Well, it doesn't that's, sound you know, too far exactly from me, actually. What we're centric here. <laughs> <laughs> I would do a lot to protect the people I care about. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, so it's hard, though. When I was younger, I used to be a tinkerer, too. Like, with just anything and everything. Wood. Metals. So I kind of, like, related myself, because this is when I was really young. I kind of related myself to, like... Since I also used to be a Sonic fan, I used to relate myself to Tails from Sonic. Because he yes. was, uh... That's my boy! <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> me too. And Tails was my favorite character, so... That's a solid choice. We, we, we all seem to agree on that one. Um... God. I don't know. For me, I mean... Um... I would probably say Justin from Grandia, because like as a kid, his biggest thing is he always wanted to be an adventurer like his father. Now, I didn't have a father who was an adventurer, but like I remember always wanting to like set out on my own and you know see the world and you know get to do all of the things that you know you can't typically do as a child. So like you know he was always a big influence on me. Um, Otherwise, like, I don't know. I, I'm actually really bad at this one in particular. It's, pretty it's hard really hard to think. To be honest. Well, yeah, it is, um, admittedly. But, like, you know, there, there have always been, like, you know, characters in people's lives that, you know, have been like, you know, hey, this guy was heroic. You know, I wanted to be just like him when I was growing up. Like, you know, say, for example, Link from Legend of Zelda. You know, everybody wanted to save the princess. They wanted to defeat Ganon and, you know, restore the world to how it used to be. So... I guess for me, I, I like it, when I think about like games in my mind, like the characters from like Final Fantasy games or like you know other JRPGs, where you know you have the big final boss and you have the story that gets there. You know, like in my mind, I play out the scenario of you know what if our world ever ended up like in ruin and you know. Whether there needed to be that group of people that had to go out and save the world. Like, you know, where would I be in all of that? You know, would I be one of those people? And, you know, what could I contribute to something like that? So, for me, characters are very, very super important. I mean, there are people that I look up to, but they just don't happen to be video game characters. I mean, that's perfectly fair. Oh my goodness, sorry, my eyeballs are burning for some reason. Whew. Owie. Allergies. All that, all that good I see, that's funny because I don't... <laughs> I've never been diagnosed with allergies before, so it's weird. I don't, I don't know what's causing it. It's weird. Oh. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't know. No. My <laughs> eye sockets. I don't know. <laughs> Try to come up with <laughs> That's the best I could do. My eye sockets. Now, oh, you know, we, we talked about, uh, you know, the dawning of, you know, technology with, like, you know, computer-generated graphics and, you know, where technology is now going these days. And technology has made leaps and bounds, you know, as to, you know, where we are today. Because, you know, we've got augmented reality. We have virtual reality. And, you know, like, wh what are your thoughts on, like, the integration now of, like, real life and, say, the fantasy life? 
Mm, I mean, I like how where virtual reality is going, but there's a physical limit to where we can go. At some point, we're going to have to go with neural interfaces if you want to be fully immersed. It, you can't simulate it all the senses, temperatures, touches, taste, smell. We can't simulate that, at least not of yet. But with the technology we have, everything's so big and clunky, we're very limited. I mean, I'm so grateful to be able to live in this era, and I'm looking forward to what the future, the future brings us. We're just with, like, big screen uh, latest headset release that literally looks like the goggles from Ready Player One, which is quite amazing. Sadly, <laughs> it doesn't have eye tracking and face tracking, which is the reason why I haven't bought it, and wireless. But it, no fee is actually working on something for the big screen, which I'm looking forward to this company. Uh, they're working on a wireless adapter for the Valve Index. Hey, Jet. Um, but I, I think... I'm looking really into like Black Mirror, their episodes where they have this alternate reality that is like all sync with the mind directly. And I don't know if we're going to get there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to live to that step of technology, but I'm really curious to see what it's going to bring us. And I think it's going to be like quite exciting. Of course, it has its pros and cons. There's a lot of people in controversy about it, but I'd rather stay focused on the positive side. That's very fair. In the next life, we'll know. We're, we're not going to remember this moment in time, but in our next lives, we'll be there. <laughs> what about you, Whip? What do you think about the uh, integration of uh, virtual and augmented reality with our uh, with our actual reality? Let's see, this when I get like really realistic with it. It's like. What will it change for you, like, personally? Like, if something becomes supremely realistic to you, that it might affect your brain somewhat. I mean, to be fair, at the moment, VR is... Is that on that path at the moment, I feel like? Or is it? I don't know. What do you got? I mean... I feel like right now, VR is, like, affecting some people, where it's, like, a full lifestyle for them. They just kind of live in the game. Or at least live in VR chat. I think it could do some good. And I think it could do some bad. But, I mean, we'll see when, you know, everything... I mean, we see how fast technology is coming along, so we'll probably see in, like, next five years how everything's gonna be, virtual reality-wise. Soon, you'll mm -hmm. probably get to the point where you can feel, like... Like, I could feel your head. There'll be some kind of, like, motion controls or some kind of, like, sensitivity pads you can wear in your hand. Where you can be able to feel something and feel what you're touching, like hair or, you know, you have your suit right here or like you have your skin, suit, I mean, hair. I feel like something like that. They have, they have haptics now. I mean, granted, it's not like full head, but, you know, most of the body. And that's typically only for the wearer, but. Yeah, I mean, that I think that's right now, but like full. I think mm, the biggest will be different. immersion. I think the biggest emergence immersion step we will achieve is the reason is when we're going to be able to have full view, both in our focal vision and um, surrounding vision. Because right now it looks like we're looking through spy glasses, um, um, uh, binoculars. It feels like we're looking through a binocular, a very wide binocular, but still there's still like a lot of black around the eyes and. I think the day where you're going to feel like you're fully submersed, that's going to be quite a next step. But the augmented reality, I will, it would be really cool to, you know, you're walking down the street and you can see like where you need to go because you use Waze or Google Map or Apple Map or whatever. And you can literally see the direction. And as you're looking in the street for restaurant, you can see like their ratings showing up and their name, their phone numbers, yes. and you can just call them. I think... For convenience sake, augmented reality is going to be really cool, but we need to put that technology into something that is actually wearable and it doesn't look mm. goofy at all, which is always the challenge, I feel. But, I mean, every number of years, the, the size of, what is it, uh, semiconductors, they, they, you know, they cut in half. So maybe mm -hmm. at some point we'll, we'll get there. Oh, I'm sure absolutely we will. Um... I guess for me personally, um, you know, both augmented reality and virtual reality, you know, I, I see as, you know, being 
integrated into real life, you know, as being like a huge benefit because, you know, we, we think back to like, um, Pokemon go and, Oh, what was the name of the game that that same company came out with? Pokemon snap. It was no, it was Pokemon go, but it was before that. Oh, it had um, like the hexagon is like their logo. Um, yeah, it was an uh, app that you could get on your phone, and you I had know. two they, different teams that, or two or three teams that were like uh, vying what is green, for what is blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I what, know what you're talking what about. What was the I name of that? I... But like, uh, like. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank over here. Got a brain I, can't, in there. I can't. I can't stand this not knowing. <laughs> But like, you know, when, when you think about augmented reality, that really encouraged people to start getting out of the house more. You know, it really pu pushed people to, you know, get out into the real world, to actually hang out with one another. And, uh, you know, you had all of these groups starting forming of people who, you know, you never would have met otherwise outside of, you know, maybe a chat room or a video game. So it really brought the whole world together. and. You know, it's the same thing with virtual reality. You know, we have, you know, you from Canada, we have you from Florida, you know, me from Georgia. We've got people from all over the world here. And, you know, we can sit here and I know you've got the name of it. <laughs> it's called Ingress. Ingress, that's the one. Ingress. Thank yes. you, kid, for shouting in my ear. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kid. For whispering in my ear. <laughs> Let's go, Ingress. <laughs> but like, you know, we we have these new ways of like bridging, you know, the distances now because like, you know, here we are on different points of the earth. I'm sitting here right next to you. You know, I mean, sure, it's in a virtual world. But we're here now. You smell nice. Oh, man, Jake. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so, like, for me, the integration of, you know, the virtual and augmented, you know, technology now being brought into our lives and into our actual realities. I mean, my girlfriend, she lives all the way out in the UK, and she's my girlfriend, you know? Like, Without this kind of technology, I probably never would have met her. So that's been, you know, a really big thing in my life. And, you know, I'm very, very grateful for that. And, you know, we're, we've talked outside of VR, you know, we've developed a real relationship. It's not just contained to within VR chat here. And so like, I, I see the benefits of, you know, this new technology that we have. It really allows to people to connect together a lot more easily. It won't replace a hug or spending time, you know, physical, but it does make the waiting time between trips and, you know, yeah, it makes those waiting times in between seeing each other, you know, go by better and easier, I think. So it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good tool to have. You know, Talking about VR chat here, you know, there's, you know, I, I talk about, like, you know, how it's bridging that gap in, you know, actuality versus, you know, virtual reality. And, you know, to some people, this is just a game. You know, they come on here, they play games, they hang out with a couple of people, they think nothing of it. Um, like, you know, what's your take on, like, virtual, you know... What is your take on virtual reality and saying, you know, specifically here to VR chat? Do you consider this just a game or do you consider this like, you know, another life within your life? I would say it's a mix of both. Now, VR chat is really fun and you get drawn to VR chat really easily because you get to be whatever you want. Like not only like as a character online, but actually physically being there well, virtually being there in the game. And I can be this image of myself that I see myself being and build connections, build friendship with people all around the world. And also, you know, I've been with my business. It really helps me as well to get different point of views and different opinions on my products and ideas and stuff like that. 
but also i like this game because it allows you to play different games like actual games inside the games <laughs> it's like gameception mm -hmm. Uh, which I think is really <laughs> cool, and it's all bu built on this one unified, one big platform that anybody can join in. I think it's fantastic. Um, though, we got to be careful because this is a bit like alcohol. Addiction can be a problem. It's a good substitute when you're struggling to make friends or socializing or seeing people. But unless you have a medical condition that ties you to a bed um it's we just got to be careful because there's a real world out there there's people that are just you know waiting to meet you and you know build a friendship and stuff so i think it's just a matter of balancing things correctly it's just like drinking on the weekend it's like okay one or two glasses okay but if you drink multiple glasses every single day then it's a problem now i don't want to sh like call out people that play every single day on vr chat everybody has their reason and i don't judge you do what you want you do what you you feel comfortable doing but i have so many responsibilities in real life that vr chat to me is the thing i will do when everything else around the house my friends is done so my final answer is i would say i consider this game as an escape um and this environment as you know me to entertain and spend time with friends and just have a good laugh and maybe tease people once in a while that's always good <laughs> <laughs> while being respectful what about you what about you what are your your thoughts and ideas i mean this game is definitely a good scapegoat especially from the real life but i mean when you get on this game it's not real life it's like i wish i could be what i am in this game but that's why we had this game to be what we want to be or see what our physical shells want to be. But this is the best we can do at the moment is playing VR chat, VR games like this. But then at the same time, it's like you can't really consider this real. It's like the friendships you may make is real. But whatever you do yeah. inside mm -hmm. the game is not real because after all, game. But it does do good things. I will say that VR chat has done good things, and it has done some bad things, like how the people running VR chat is doing. <laughs> I wasn't Everything gonna has say its it. pros and cons. <laughs> it has its pros and cons. It mm. does. There's a lot of pros, a lot of cons. It depends which side of the boat you go. But as a furry, you'll see both of them regardless. True. I guess when it comes down to it, I'm with both of you guys on this one. Um, where, like, you know, the friendships that you make here, you know, the connections that you make with people are, are very much, very much a real thing. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm not an eight foot three mama gen drenched in blood, you know, staring everybody down, ready to kill. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, in that respect, it isn't, you know, it is a game, you know, like there are worlds out there where you can be Superman and leap tall buildings in a single bound and, you, you can't do that in you know reality so it, it allows you to be able to live out in you know the say fantasy life but then at the same time you know you can actually have you know a real life here as long as you you know like you said don't forget you know there's the actual world you have actual responsibilities you know you got to clean the house you gotta pay the bills you know you, you gotta work you gotta work you know on your car and stuff like that like there's actual things that need to happen and then when all of that is over and you know you can take the time to hang out with your friends then that's when you know you can jump onto something like vr chat and you know push the real world outside you know out of your head and you know get to live this fantasy life I gotta say, for me, VR chat is a really good way to relieve a lot of stress, anxiety, and feeling overwhelmed. Um, because I have so many things and responsibility in my business and my 40 hour job that I do as well. I have a new product coming up, so I'm gonna be busy for the next couple of weeks. But when I feel overwhelmed, I feel like there's a bunch of like craziness inside me because I love to being a goofball. I love being a clown. So VR chat is really my scapegoat to be go out there and just goof around and have a good time. So it 
it's very therapeutic for me to hop on VR chat, but I try to make sure that it does not become an addiction uh, because, you know, like you said, we have responsibilities. <laughs> it sucks, mm -hmm. but we got to do them. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because then it, it brought up another point in my uh, in my thoughts were like, you know, go ahead. You go first. I I'll get out my thought. You go ahead. The game can be relaxing. <laughs> Yep. just depends on who you become friends with. Remember that. True. <laughs> Very true. That's the one true. thing about this game. Game is fun until you meet the wrong group of people. And then you hate it. That's about as much as you can really say. So choose wisely. Yeah, it's just like real life. You should choose your friends wisely. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so as I was saying, sorry, it took me a moment to like regather my thoughts here. <laughs> um, when you, when you mentioned that, like you know, you can come in here and you know you can be a goofball and stuff like that, and you know we get to play these characters. It reminded me of like, you know, what a lot of people's like theories and thoughts are on like fur suits, for example. Like you know, there's a lot of people in the furry fandom who are super introverted who are super you know kind of to themselves and you know are they, they don't want to interact with the outside world because to them it's very scary but when they put on the fursuit you know they come to life you know they jump around like you know they get like really up close to you and they just they want to dance around and they're super excitable and stuff like that and well, i've actually seen it a lot of times you know, like in vr chat it's the same thing where like you know we you know, I mean, me in real life, I'm actually very introverted myself. You know, I, it's something that kind of developed over the years. And like, you know, I find myself to be, you know, you know, it's really hard to be in large groups, but when I come in here in VR chat, it's just like, you know, I can be in a room with like, you know, 10, 15, 20 people. And like, you know, you know, in a way I can hide behind this character and, you know, I can really let myself go. I can really, you know, allow myself to you know, be more expressive. And so, you know, like you said, it can be actually very therapeutic. A lot of people that are struggling with, you know, being introverts, they become extrovert through this game. And I think it would be a good way to for people to work on themselves so that outside the game, they can be a little bit more extroverted, a little bit less introverted. And it allows you to, to work on your social skill, which is something I really struggled when I was a kid. Um, I can confidently say that I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> I'm not perfect, but I think VR chat can be a great tool. With great tools come great responsibility. Yes, I know that. <laughs> Trust me. Yes, <laughs> the amount of people that yeah. starts like. Ee! <laughs> Go ahead. What? Sorry. I, wow, I was muted. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, like, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> in a Discord call. Where are we with time? Uh, we're we done. Ten mark <laughs> we're actually done. <laughs> we're, we're actually done. No! <laughs> That's fine. But it, yeah. it all right, you guys. We're actually right on time. It's like exactly an hour or minus one or one or two minutes. <laughs> all right. You so it. I guess in that that case thank you guys all for tuning in today's episode we hope that you've been able to find, you know kind of relive some of your childhood memories or maybe you know we've sparked some new interests in gaming for some of you whatever the case may be we appreciate you for listening in be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode and be sure to tune in for our end of the month special which it sounds like uh we might have a really good plan going <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week on Top Dogs and for now, take care of yourselves take care of each other bye everybody bye bye, bye good bye. night and drink water please and drink coffee yeah, and that's a wrap I, I whiplash <laughs> come on <laughs> oh my gosh you can't right. say that yeah you can oh my god. what yeah you can oh my god yeah you can say sorry you can say whatever you want off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah,
It does. You know it. Yeah, you have to massage. There goes the tip. Oh, you get the massage. Oh, my you have to, you have God. Keep it. All right. <laughs> Wow. Hey, I'll get that. I'll get that. I can imagine this though. Dry wings. I mean, I am literally like. I hate that idea. I don't like. I know exactly what they look like. I know what they test like. I know what they feel like in their mouth. I hate it. I was gonna say something too about like if you get on this game, don't be too horny because they're one of those games horny. Sakura. But welcome to the Himbo Hooters. Yeah, I'm on the uh, if you don't coach. subscribe to Top Dogs, we're oh. gonna get you dry wigs. Oh god! Hug your friend. Hey, Doctor, hug your friend. That is the off. worst. I I think that's one of the worst like threats. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the best but him. most funniest ones. Yeah. One two three. There we go. One two three. Yeah. Good. Good. Great. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, awesome. Thank you. We're good. <laughs> that was funny. Where was that when you came up with that thread? That was uh, as soon as you get those okay. uploaded, I'm gonna remember to make the uh, thing for next uh, thing. Oh yeah, that's right. Ping me in it. I, 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 you know what's funny?